The Wooden Real Adventures of Thomas the Tank Engine, Episode 15, Stinky Stanley. And so the next day, I saw the dinosaurs going along the track uh, again. What does it take to get And I was so scared that I ran all the way to Austin here. Castle. When I got there, Stephen and Millie saw the dinosaurs, and they ran into the castle in fright. And so, Stanley, how's life in Great Warrington? Oh, same old, same old, said Stanley. How's life on your branch line? Well, pretty much same old, same old, like always, said Thomas. Say, Stanley, have you ever noticed that those diesels over there have been in the sheds for the past month or so? Why is that? I don't know, said Stanley. I overheard them saying that they were on strike or something, but I don't know what they're on strike for. Hmm, I might go tell Tom Had what, what they're doing tomorrow, said Thomas. It's getting late. We should be getting some rest. See you later, Stanley. And Thomas and Stanley popped away back to their sheds. The storm was not as bad as anyone expected it to be. There was a lot of rain, but just when the storm was about to blow over, the oil depot was blown over and it crashed onto the tracks. And a water tower near Timid Station was picked off, up off the ground and thrown into the side of the building. The next day, Sir Topham Howe was at Nafford Station when Stanley arrived. Hello sir, said Stanley. I wanted to tell you that the line to Great Waterton is blocked by trees, so I can't work there today. Thank you, Stanley, said the Tom Hat. I would like you to go work at Timid Station today, said the Tom Hat. All right, said Stanley, and Stanley puffed away. But when Stanley arrived at Timid Station, he had a nasty surprise. Patrick, said Stanley, what happened to the station? That water tower that Byron is pushing got thrown from the ground into the station, said Patrick. Thankfully, no one was inside. But now, the trains are going to have to be changed around a little. And this is going to cause confusion and delay. We're doing our best to get the station rebuilt, but it's going to take a row. It might take until halfway through the summer, for all we know. Oh dear, said Stanley. I better go tell the Tom Hat about this. And he rushed away back to Nafford. When Stanley returned to Napford, Sir Topham Hat was talking to someone that Stanley didn't recognize. Sir, said Stanley, Timid Station has been demolished by the storm. Oh dear, said the Tom Hat, that's a very busy station. Don't worry, sir, said Stanley, the pack's already at work getting the rebel cleaned up. Okay, good, said Tom Hat. Well, what should I do now, said Stanley? Well, said the Tom Hat, I just received a call that the oil depot was fell onto the tracks near the quarry, so I'm going to need to have the tracks repaired. This will also will require putting a fresh load of ballast under the tracks. Can you go to the Arsdale Railway and collect some ballast? Yes, sir, said Stanley. By the way, who is this person you're talking to? This is Sir Richard Hat, says the Tom Hat. He will be taking over the role of controller of the railway when I retire. I see, says Stanley. Well, nice to meet you, Richard. Oh, one more thing, sir. I don't know if you've already known this, but those diesels over at the sheds are on strike or something. I don't know why. Can you go investigate? I sure can, says Tom Hat. Well, you better get to the officer railway, really, Stanley. Mike, Rex, and Frank will be raiding. All right, says Stanley, and he hurried away. Stanley soon arrived at the oil stair really. His trucks were already under the ballast chute. Frank was pushing a ballast truck off over the hopper so it could be loaded onto the trucks below. Once the ballast was loaded, Stanley set off. Unfortunately, Stanley didn't know the route. He started going down the line in the opposite direction. Stanley went up the coin mine tunnel and across the Sodor Bay Bridge. 
As Stanley went up onto the viaduct, Timothy passed by on the other track. Timothy hadn't seen Stanley, and they were both heading down the same track towards each other. Timothy came onto the bridge first, but just then Stanley came around the bend. Timothy quickly switched onto a siding, and he tumbled off the end of the track and crashed onto the ground below, bringing the China Clay cars off the line with him. But Stanley had had so much momentum from the last hill that when he came around the bend, he slid off the tracks and fell to the ground and crashed into a train of garbage that was being pulled by Whiff and Scrub. Luckily, Stanley's driver, fireman, and guard had jumped clear. But Stanley was in a stinky, dirty mess. And Timothy was not in good condition either. The two of them were sent to the works. Stephanie and Fergus were getting new wheels. When Stanley arrived, Fergus spoke up. Make way for stinky Stanley, he said. Stanley did feel very silly indeed. And stinky. Listen up, Diesels. A little birdie told me that you... Th guys are on strike, and I want to know why. You want to know why? We'll tell you why. Back in March, Dart and I overheard you talking to Bear, Derek, Boko, and Daisy. You were saying that Diesel had gone missing, and that you sent, were going to send those four out to find him. <laughs> when you mentioned that you were going to punish these over taking duck slip coaches. Dart and I told the others, and we vowed to go on strike. So you're just going on strike just because I said I'm going to punish these over taking duck slip coaches? Well, I can't say I'm happy to hear this, but if you're that worried about Diesel, then maybe you guys should get out of the shed and go look for him yourselves. Mike spotted him going under the incline a few weeks ago, so that means that he's somewhere, still somewhere on the island. And before Sir Tobin had knew it, the Diesels had all left the sheds. Well, Sir Tobin had, that was easy. Almost a little too easy. But thinking nothing of it, Sir Tom had walked away to go inspect the island for any more damage from the summer storm.